Ah, YouTube. The most narcissistic time and place in the most narcissistic time and place in history. So, without any further ado, my life. I was born in Bangor, Maine in 1982. George Orwell's sweet, sweet utopia lie just around the corner. All the government a scared public could ever hope for on it, and a TV screen covering every surface. Alas, two epic disappointments in as many years. I don't remember being born. I'm sure it was slimy though, but that's just an assumption. Let me call my mom and ask. Hi, Mom. Hey, sweetie. Uh, I have a quick question for you. Okay. Was it slimy when I was born? Mom? She hung up on me. I have a twin brother and an older brother. Neither of them suffer from mood disorders or partially see-through clothing. They're fully-fledged grown-ups. I guess you do miss that bus when you feed your vegetables to the dog. Now they spend a lot of time asking me if I'm okay when I make something I find amusing. Bangor was amazing. I had unbelievable friends like Adam and Woozer who let me be myself. We trained for futures as alcoholic porn addicts with obscene amounts of Mountain Dew and Zelda. Woozer lo looks like this. Ever threatening our relationship with emoji. Adam looks like this. Minus the eye scar. Just think about it, dude. That's all I'm saying. Then I went away to college and found out that people hide all their eccentricities in order to fit in and mock people slow to learn that rule. I wonder if monkeys would pick on the one with the bumper sticker that says, My other car is banana, 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 banana. My mom knows these kinds of things. Hold on. I guess I could have stopped wearing pajama pants all the time. So, after existing in a world I was clearly not meant for, my psyche broke, and I landed in a mental hospital. It was there that I met my best friend for life. Oh, and some guy blessed me with his urine, so I'm protected. That's why I don't have to worry about insurance. This might all seem like a bum deal, but it wasn't that bad till the flip side hit. I spent ten years wallowing in the blue funk. On the plus side, I can now truly appreciate the blues, but I wouldn't take that trade if offered. Then my second best friend, Brett, said I should come to New York. It was hard for me to move away from my couch and gym sock. I'm sure they were sad too, but my mom said they went to a better place. I'd call her, but, you know, I miss them sometimes. Such is life. In New York, I met Sean and Lily. They're shining rays of light, but not annoying about it like joggers. Brett looks like this, without the literal cape. But I could see it. Lily looks like this. Her aura's mauve, and she has a severe allergy to dresses. I think it's the dander. Sean looks like this. He opened a pizza place so he can eat pepperoni. If he's not eating pepperoni, he's not Sean. Then Sean moved out because he found someone even cooler than me. Her name is Mandy. She's the fucking tits. She has a part-time job in purgatory, which is like extra purgatory. Even though I was in a good place, still the blue funk. So I kicked my meds and broke again. The break allowed me to see the blue funk through new eyes. And I realized I should fight for at least some contentment. It also allowed me to communicate telepathically with aliens. 
and connect with friends I'd been hiding from during the doldrums. This is Jordan, Bowman, Justin, Cam, Naran, Greg, Allie, Donnie, Jacob, and Max. If you see him, give him a hug. If you don't have any arms, improvise. Unfortunately, the blue funk returned, leaving me with only the crystal clear memories of a better life where I have friends, don't drink, and experience sunlight. And this. Plus at night, I vigilante.